Hello and welcome to vlog number 7. In the last episode, I finished the masters for the MB5 undercarriage and sent them off for bronze casting. In this episode, I tackle the rest of the masters and finish the sample of the Martin Baker MB5. I have chosen to recreate the MB5 as it was flown at the Farnborough Air Show in 1946. All of my models are available with optional figures which I sculpt by hand. To accompany the MB5, I'm sculpting James Martin, the designer of the MB5, and Jan Zurakowski, the famous test pilot. Zurakowski described the MB5 as the best airplane he had ever flown, better in many ways than the Spitfire. I bought a couple of multi-pose figures to help me sculpt more natural poses. One of them is very good, but the head and right arm keep falling off the other one. If you have any suggestions for names for this double act, leave them in the comments, and I'll announce my choice in the next vlog. The figures are sculpted in milliput, roughly at first, then carved down before more milliput is added, and carved again until I achieve the final result. This normally takes a couple of days to complete. The 3D printed parts are bonked up with milliput at this stage, as they will become metal masters. The metal masters always need a lot of cleaning up, so it's better to have plenty of material to work with. For anything larger than the figures, I usually ignore the detail at this stage. To create the metal masters, I make cold cure silicon moulds. I begin by embedding the masters into plasticine and build a Lego box around them. With the first half poured, the moulds are rebuilt without the plasticine, ready to pour the other side. The Lego can now be removed and the moulds broken down, ready for the feeds to be cut. I begin by removing the milliput masters. I won't need them anymore for this project. The excess silicon is carefully trimmed away from the outside of the mould using a fresh scalpel blade. I then mark out roughly where I want the feeds with a biro. I try and put the feeds where there is little or no detail. The first cut is always at 45 degrees into the feed, and then I cut the feed channel. With the feeds cut, I then remark them in biro. This allows me to accurately transfer them to the other half of the mould. I can now cut the other side to increase the head of metal. This creates more pressure to force the metal into the detail. The pouring holes also need to be opened up, so that I don't spill metal everywhere. As before, I mark out where I'm going to cut and then break out the scalpel. Now I begin to cut out the air vents. I try and imagine where the air escaping from the mould will get trapped and cut accordingly. Wherever possible, I try and vent out of the top of the mould, so that I don't get metal leaking out the air vents.
With the main vents cut, I drill additional vents into the deeper areas on both sides of the mould. I have to pump the drill as the silicon is soft and doesn't drill well. Vents are then cut across the back of the mould to release the air. The moulds are then dusted all over and any loose silicon removed with a firm brush. And there you have it, the first mould is cut. Now on to the others. With all the moulds cut, it's time to pour some metal. The moulds are held closed between two boards secured with rubber bands. When the metal has cooled, I can break open the moulds and select the best castings from the session. You would think the casting would come out smaller than the master, but this is not the case. As you can see from the chin casting, it is oversized. This is not a problem, as it is always easier to remove metal with a file than add it. Now begins the long process of cleaning up the selected castings to make the finished metal masters. As you can imagine, this takes several weeks of filing, fitting, checking and adding detail. With all the metal and ABS masters finished, I can now move on to the next stage and make the production moulds. This is a typical vulcanised rubber production mould, in this case for the Spitfire 9C. The two halves of the mould are assembled and spun in a casting machine. Pewter is poured through the centre and flows into the cavities, forcing air out of the vents. It all works to the same principle as the cold cure mould. I begin by planning what goes on to what mould, keeping like parts together. For the MB5, I'll be making two 9 inch moulds for parts and one 12 inch mould for the fuselage and wings. The fuselage mould came out well, although the masters took a pounding. The silicon mould cures at 95 degrees C and the master softens at 105. My heart sank at this stage. The masters were trashed and I just had to hope the mould was usable. The metal masters allow me to use more durable rubber for mould making. This mould is fresh from the press and ready for cutting. You can even see the steam coming off it. I'm wearing gloves as the hot mould is at 150 degrees C. I begin by prying out the masters and then working through the same cutting procedure as the silicon moulds. It's important to cut the moulds while they're hot, as cold rubber is so much harder and impossible to cut accurately.
with the production moulds cut, it's now the moment of truth, casting time. The moulds are freshly dusted with talc, placed into the casting machine and the metal poured. Once cooled, the mould can be taken out and the castings revealed. This is the first spin of this mould, so I'm not expecting too much, but hoping for the best. The result is pretty good. Everything is cast, there is some surface scorching and flash, but when I do a production run, that should get ironed out. I reckon 8 out of 10. Now, with everything cast, it's time to break out the files and assemble the sample. The first MB5 has gone together well, and the detail on the bronze undercarriage is fantastic. Now, let's see the finished model. The quality of the finish on the sample is not as high as it will be on the production models. The sample is where I find out what methods do and don't work for the particular model concerned. I have to say I'm very happy with the result. This is a substantial model and will enhance any collection. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing how the MB5 made it into production. If you'd like to see more videos, please hit subscribe. There are lots more models still to come.